hatch. You are go to open the hatch. So we want to go ahead and call down Ricky's copy. Good morning and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where at this hour, flight controllers are at the ready to support the third spacewalk of the year out of the Quest airlock on the U.S. segment of the station, a planned six and a half hour excursion by two American astronauts to continue the maintenance and upgrades of space station hardware. As we speak, Expedition 55 flight engineers Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold, a pair of NASA spaceflight and spacewalk veterans, are suited up in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock. You're looking at Drew Feustel in this uh, live view from the equipment lock. They are uh, conducting uh, the final steps of preparations to begin uh, their spacewalk, which is running uh, slightly behind schedule. We'll explain all that in a minute. Today's spacewalk occurs just eight days after Feustel and Arnold launched to the space station from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in their Soyuz MS-08 spacecraft, arriving at the space station just six days ago. We'll break down the spacewalk and its objectives in a few moments after we set the stage for today's activities. Just to recap where we're at, as you look at uh, NASA astronaut Scott Tingle on the left side of your screen and Drew Feustel, who is suited up in his extravehicular mobility unit. Out of the field of view at the moment is his spacewalking uh, companion for the day, Ricky Arnold. Uh, and again, we'll uh, be talking more about the spacewalk itself in a minute. The crew uh, was up and uh, at the uh, at the ready uh, just after midnight central time this morning. They stepped into their spacewalking uh, preparations. Everything was going by the book until just before 4 a.m. central time about an hour and a half ago after the crew had suited up in their extravehicular mobility units. Uh, Drew Feustel's suit that you're looking at right now failed a leak check, which is part of the standard and staple uh, pre-spacewalk preparations that take place after the suit is pressurized. The crew began uh, to troubleshoot uh, both Scott Tingle and Japanese astronaut Norishige Kanai, who's responsible for the suit-up activities today in the airlock. Feustel uh, took his helmet and gloves off. Uh, they uh, checked the connections. They put the helmet and gloves back on, and twice more, the leak checks failed. So there were three failed leak checks. After that, uh, Tingle wiped down uh, the seals and the sealing surfaces on the connections for the helmet and the gloves. And on the fourth try, uh, Feustel's suit did pass its leak check just about 10 minutes ago, and we are pressing ahead now with the rest of the spacewalk preparations. The only uh, downside is that we're about an hour and a half behind the timeline right now, uh, so that would imply at least that the spacewalk would not begin until about 8.40 a.m. Central Time, 9.40 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll see if the crew makes up any lost time along the way. But again, we're about an hour and a half down on the timeline because of uh, three failed leak checks for Drew Feustel's spacesuit uh, during uh, the final preparations. Ricky Arnold's spacesuit passed its leak check right off the bat with no issues. So both crew members now have their suits in a nominal configuration as we continue with uh, the regular complement of spacewalk preparations. Question number six again, that the answer to question six. He says a very slight uh, point on the left. Today's spacewalk uh, by Feustel and Arnold will be the 209th spacewalk in International Space Station program history. As you see in this graphic for Drew Feustel, who is designated EV-1 or extravehicular crew member one today wearing the spacesuit bearing the red stripes, this will be the seventh spacewalk of his career. In this, his third flight into space. Six previous spacewalks have totaled 42 hours and 18 minutes of spacewalking time. Three EVAs for Drew Feustel during the STS-125 mission in 2009, which was the final servicing mission for the Hubble Space Telescope. Three more spacewalks conducted on the penultimate space shuttle mission, STS-134, at the International Space Station in 2011. 
Ricky Arnold, the former educator who is in his second flight into space, conducted two spacewalks on the STS-119 Space Shuttle Assembly Mission to the station in 2009. He accrues uh, two, 12 hours and 34 minutes of spacewalking time going into today's activities. Arnold is EV-2, or extravehicular crew member number two for today's spacewalk. He'll be wearing the suit without any stripes. As is always the case, both spacewalkers will be equipped with helmet cameras to provide flight controllers and you with the up-close personal views of the work they're conducting outside the station. Today, Drew Feustel's helmet camera will carry the number 17 in the lower right-hand corner of those images once the crew makes its way outside of the Quest airlock. Ricky Arnold's helmet camera will carry the number 18. We concur. Throughout the course of uh, today's spacewalk, uh, we will uh, be addressing uh, a variety of different social media platforms. Today's spacewalk is also being seen on Facebook Live. Later on uh, this morning, uh, we will have uh, Flight Director Emily Nelson and veteran astronaut and veteran spacewalker Tom Marshburn in the viewing room overlooking the International Space Station Flight Control Room here to answer questions on Facebook Live, all part of uh, today's coverage. And not only will we be answering your questions on the air, uh, veteran spacewalker and veteran astronaut Doug Wheelock will be answering questions you are submitting with the hashtag AskNASA on his Twitter account, which is at Astro underscore wheels. So a variety of different ways that you can directly engage in today's spacewalking coverage. Uh, and again, as uh, you look at Drew Feustel in the equipment lock section of the uh, Quest airlock, his uh, spacesuit uh, finally passed a leak check on the fourth try, and uh, we are pressing ahead with other spacewalk preparations, but we are about an hour and a half down on today's timeline. Station airlock, you have a go for Drew's questionnaire. He goes.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're continuing to watch uh, the equipment lock section of the crew, uh, the two compartment Quest airlock on the U.S. segment of the International Space Station. NASA astronaut Scott Tingle on the left side of your screen, who is assisting Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency uh, with the suit up and uh, pre-spacewalk preparations uh, for Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold. You're looking at Feustel, uh, who is extravehicular crew member number one, EV-1, wearing the suit bearing the red stripes, about uh, to begin the seventh spacewalk of his career. His uh, spacesuit failed three leak checks about uh, two hours ago, in the last two hours. The fourth leak check, however, was successful after uh, sealing surfaces and sealing connections uh, with the arms and the helmet uh, and the glove sections of that extravehicular mobility unit were wiped down. Uh, so uh, Feustel is uh, good to go, but uh, the time it took uh, to troubleshoot uh, that leak check issue with Feustel's suit has now cost us a bit of time. We're about an hour and 20 minutes or so down in the timeline for the start of the spacewalk that had been scheduled to get underway shortly after 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. That'll be pushed back by about an hour and 20 minutes while we complete other spacewalking preparations. Today's spacewalk comes in the middle of a very busy period for the Expedition 55 crew on board the International Space Station. Just uh, 24 hours ago, a, an unpiloted uh, Russian cargo craft, the ISS Progress 68, uh, undocked uh, from the pier's docking compartment on the International Space Station. Uh, its undocking uh, marked uh, an end to the time uh, that the Progress uh, was on board the station. Having arrived last October, You can see the undocking that occurred at 8.50 a.m. Central Time yesterday, 9.50 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the progress uh, loaded with trash, undocked uh, from the pier's docking compartment following a stay that began with its arrival at the station last October. The progress uh, was uh, sent off to a safe distance away from the International Space Station for uh, about a month worth of engineering experiments uh, that will be conducted by Russian flight controllers over at the Russian Mission Control Center. That progress is to be deorbited on April 25th and will burn up harmlessly over the South Pacific. So with the progress uh, well away from the International Space Station and after today's spacewalk, next up will be the scheduled launch of the SpaceX uh, Dragon cargo craft uh, from uh, Florida next uh, Monday, April 2nd. That launch is scheduled for 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, launch coverage on NASA TV will begin at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. The uh, SpaceX uh, CRS-14, or Cargo Resupply Mission Number 14, to the International Space Station under uh, SpaceX's contract with NASA uh, will uh, result in an arrival of the Dragon cargo craft at the International Space Station next Wednesday, April 4th, where it will be captured by Japanese astronaut Norishige Kanai, backed up by NASA's Scott Tingle, using the station's uh, Canadian-built robotic arm. It will be berthed to the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station, carrying about 5,000 pounds of scientific experiments and supplies for the crew on board the International Space Station. But the first order of business uh, is today's spacewalk, again, the start of which is running slightly behind schedule uh, because of uh, some troubleshooting that was required to uh, solve uh, several failed leak checks on Drew Feustel's spacesuit. That suit is uh, now airtight, in good shape, and pressurized. The crew uh, soon will be purging uh, those suits and going through other uh, pre-spacewalk preparations. And again, uh, we are running about an hour and a half behind the timeline. We'll see if any of that time can be made up as we move along here with the uh, final steps in preparing Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold to go out of the hatch in the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. Today's spacewalk uh, 
by Feustel and Arnold has uh, a number of objectives uh, to uh, increase uh, the maintenance and upgrade uh, capability of station systems. The lead spacewalk officer for today's excursion, Grant Slusser, provides us with a, a nice comprehensive view of all of the activities that lie ahead throughout the course of today. We're going to start the EVA at the airlock with both crew coming outside. Once we get outside, we'll start with EV2 working over to the port truss where he's going to ingress the arm to get ready for the RBVM task or radiator beam valve module jumper removal task. As he's doing that, EV1 is going to go aft port to node 3 in cone where we're going to install some external wireless communication antennas. On a previous EVA, the handrails that we're replacing have been removed and the new handrails that we have taking out are going to have the antennas installed for this wireless communication system outside. We're going to start on the nader side, deploying a nader antenna and a plate. It's going to replace the handrail that we had removed previously. Once we get that antenna installed, then we're going to move up to the Zenith side where we're going to install another on-orbit installable handrail with an antenna. After we get the two handrails installed with the antennas, and we're going to connect the two cables. Prior to the pressurized mating adapter being removed, uh, we installed a cable in there to connect these two, and we're going to connect them underneath the PMA cover and then down to the nader antenna. Once both antennas are installed and the cables are hooked up, then EV1 is going to go back to the airlock and change out bags with this bag to the large CP8 camera group bag that we're going to deploy as a team, EV1 and EV2 will work together. While EV1 was working on the EWC antennas, EV2 has been steadily working to get the RBVM jumpers removed. We're gonna start with the heater cable electrical connections. Once those are removed, then we're gonna remove the clamps holding down the RBVM jumpers and remove both jumpers. This is an indication of the RBVM side or the radiator beam valve module side. After that, we're going to go to the radiator side of these jumpers and remove those. Once we have both jumpers removed, he's going to stow them on his bag configuration on the outside and prepare for the next task of the camera group. EV1 is going to go out to that same area EV2 is at, so he's going to go out to the port side of the truss where camera port 8 is zenith. He's going to prepare and deploy the bag with the new camera group and get ready for EV1 to translate over from the RBVM. You see here it's a short transfer over from the RBVM jumpers to the camera group. This is a camera port 8. Uh, the pan and tilt has stopped working so we're going to pan and tilt that unit down into the stowed location before we remove it. So both crew will work together to get this camera group out. The first thing is moving it to the stowed location so we can remove it. After that, we'll lock the pan and tilt unit and disconnect the electrical cable. Once that's disconnected, then we'll position ourselves to remove the camera. We have an HD camera and a standard camera. We're gonna reuse this high definition camera. So we'll remove that prior to removing the camera group. Once that's removed, then we'll remove the camera group, which is the camera and the light and he'll hand it down to EV1, who will hand up the new camera group. While EV2 is working on the new camera group to get it installed, EV1 will be packing up the failed unit and taking it back to the airlock. As EV1's completing that translation back to the airlock and 
getting a get ahead bag there. EV2 is going to continue with the camera install. We'll start with the standard camera and the light install. Once we're complete with that, then we'll work on the HD camera, putting the HD camera that we removed previously back on to the camera group. After installing the HD camera, we'll reconnect the electrodes to get it all powered up and we'll be complete with this task. EV1's back, we're going to transfer bags. If we have enough time, we're going to go after a couple of get-aheads while the crew is on the arm. Uh, EV1 is going to take back the jumper bag and put it in the airlock. For this video, we have not shown the get-ahead, so EV2 is going to get off the arm there at the port truss, and EV1 is going to go get ready for the next EVA. We're going to remove a jumper from behind the MLI on the starboard truss and take that down to the PFCS for the next EVA, the PFCS relocate. they're going to be swapping out two pump flow control sub-assemblies. So we're going to help them get a little bit ahead by removing this jumper and deploying it down at the PFCS on the port side of the lab. And then he's going to be complete for the day. EV2 is going to take the APFR out of the arm that he's been riding and take it to that same location again, trying to set the next EVA up to get a little bit ahead when they go out the door so they don't have to move these items down to the work area. So he's going to take it to the port side of the lab where he's going to deploy that down at the PFCS locations. Once we get that installed, then both crew are going to return to the airlock and come inside. And uh, you're looking at Grant Slusser, today's uh, lead spacewalk officer, uh, who has worked uh, with uh, Feustel and Arnold and all the rest of uh, his backroom operators uh, to put together all of the elements of uh, today's excursion uh, by Feustel and Arnold, uh, which will be the 209th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. This uh, spacewalk uh, is now scheduled to begin somewhere in the neighborhood of about 8.30 a.m. Central Time, 9.30 Eastern Time, following uh, some delays caused uh, by the completion of uh, leak checks uh, to Drew Feustel's spacesuit. Those leak checks are complete. Both uh, his suit and Ricky Arnold's suit are airtight, and uh, the suits have uh, undergone their purge. The next uh, order of business will be the uh, what is called the in-suit light exercise pre-breathe protocol that uh, will slightly increase uh, the um, metabolic rate of the two uh, spacewalkers uh, as they uh, are passively uh, biding their time now in the equipment lock section of the airlock that will uh, ensure that any residual nitrogen is purged from their bloodstreams, preventing any... Uh, situation known as decompression sickness or the bends from occurring when they step out into uh, the vacuum of space a little bit later this morning. Here in the flight control room, uh, shift handover is complete. The Orbit 2 team is now on console. Tony Sakachi is the flight director for this spacewalk today. At the bottom of your screen in the white shirt, he has uh, just uh, handed over from uh, Flight Director Ed Van Seis, who is sitting to his right, who uh, presided over the uh, overnight uh, pre-spacewalk uh, preparations for the crew. Uh, there are another pair of Capcoms who have just uh, come on, spacecraft communicators who have come on. Standing uh, is uh, Leslie Ringo. She will be the Capcom talking uh, to Scott Tingle and Norishige Kanai during uh, the period up through and including uh, the pre-depressurization of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. And to her right is a Japanese astronaut, Aki Hoshide, a veteran uh, astronaut who will be the ground IV or intravehicular crew member who will be talking directly to Feustel and Arnold as they uh, work their procedures outside of the Quest airlock throughout the course of the day. On the left of your screen is a, a former EVA officer, Alex Canalakos, who is now a spacecraft communicator in the blue shirt. He uh, also has been working overnight with Ed Van Seis, guiding uh, the two spacewalkers through their pre-spacewalk preparations.
open, you know, hatch is open, and we started the three minutes timer for the parking. Copy, Nemo. So near com one, we have completed the eight minutes total parts time eleven o one, and we are ready to start uh, in situ pre breathe protocol. Copy eleven o one Nemo, and uh, before we start the exercise, we'd like you to move the free end of the flexible vent duct into node one. Teamwork. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock, uh, talking to spacecraft communicator Alex Kanalakos here in Mission Control on the progress of uh, pre-spacewalk preparations. Uh, we uh, are running behind uh, the timeline for the day. We now expect uh, the spacewalk to get underway uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 8.30 a.m. Uh, Central Time. We're about an hour and a half down on the timeline because of uh, issues that arose earlier this morning, maybe about uh, two hours ago or so now, uh, with Drew Feustel's suit that failed uh, three leak checks. Uh, various components, the arms of the suit, uh, the helmet, uh, the gloves were removed. Sealing surfaces and sealing connections were wiped down by uh, Scott Tingle, uh, NASA 
flight engineer for Expedition 55, who is assisting uh, with uh, the uh, spacewalk preparations along with Kanai. As you look at this shot in the equipment lock section of Quest, Foistel uh, is on the right, wearing the suit bearing the red stripes, uh, as you can see on his legs. He is extravehicular crew member number one for today's spacewalk, uh, soon to begin the seventh spacewalk of his career. On the left, Ricky Arnold, extravehicular crew member number two, EV2, wearing the suit with no stripes. Uh, the crew uh, beginning to move their legs and arms to increase their metabolic rate in what is known as the uh, in-suit light uh, weight exercise uh, pre-breathe protocol, the aisle protocol as it is known. Uh, this uh, increases the flow of oxygen uh, through their bloodstreams, eliminating uh, uh, any residual nitrogen from their bloodstreams uh, and preventing uh, any condition known as the bends or decompression sickness from uh, incurring uh, as they move out into the void of space uh, after they float through that hatchway into uh, the crew lock section of Quest and close the hatch and depressurize uh, that section of the airlock in advance of the start of the uh, spacewalk, which is now scheduled to begin about two and a half hours from now, around 8.30 a.m. Central Time. But again, uh, as, uh, as we said, uh, uh, we ran behind in our preparations today because of a, a series of failed leak checks on Drew Foistel's suit. However, uh, troubleshooting uh, proved successful. Uh, the ceiling surfaces were wiped down. Uh, the suit uh, was repressurized and everything is in good shape now. Both suits, both Foistel's suit and Arnold's suit are in excellent shape, ready to support today's spacewalk. We'll be joined shortly here on console by uh, veteran spacewalk officer Art Thomason to uh, discuss uh, the objectives of today's excursion outside of the Quest airlock by Foistel and Arnold. Again, the 209th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. At this hour, the International Space Station is flying 254 miles above the Earth, moving from southwest to northeast, flying over Madagascar in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Stop exercise in three, two, one, mark.
Starting cycle two in three, two, one, begin. And good morning once again from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at Mission Control in Houston. Uh, with us today is a, another veteran spacewalk officer, since that's the theme of the day. That's Art Thomason. Ta Art, uh, welcome with us uh, this morning. Thanks for being with us on a rainy morning here in Southeast Texas. Thanks, Rob. The uh, spacewalk today by Foistel and Arnold, um, it's sort of a grab bag of activities uh, that will uh, improve and upgrade uh, station systems and set the stage for upcoming spacewalks and upcoming uh, payload arrivals and those types of things. Can you give us a rundown of uh, what's on tap for Foistel and Arnold? Yeah, sure. There's uh, three major tasks on the spacewalk today. Uh, the first one will be to install a wireless communication system on the outside of node three. So this, in, this uh, it consists of two antennas and the cabling that runs out to the antennas. And these antennas are going to communicate with future science experiments that are on the outside of space station. Uh, the next task is going to be to remove a jumper. So this jumper runs um, out to the radiator, which is part of the cooling system for space station. Uh, there was a leak identified, and this seems to be the culprit of that leak. So they're going to remove that jumper, bring it inside, and then replace it on a later spacewalk, fly up a new one. Um, so hopefully this is something that's going to that's going to be able to um, improve the radiator performance because we had to shut down a section of the radiator to accommodate this. And then the uh, final task, uh, both crew members will work together on this one. Uh, we'll have 
uh, Ricky on the arm and Drew will be uh, working free float and they're going to replace a camera. This is a camera that's on camera port 8 and uh, the reason we want to replace it is the standard definition camera lost the pan tilt capability so it can't be commanded it's just kind of stuck in one spot. So they're going to take that camera and light off uh, replace it with a new one and then the high definition camera that's attached to that that one's still in good shape so they'll take that one off for of the one that they remove put it on the new one and get that installed um, if everything goes well those are completed ahead of schedule or before the, the consumables run out uh, then we have a couple other tasks that they're going to do to get ready for the next spacewalk so um, that will be to replace a, or move a portable foot restraint uh, so this foot restraint is going to be needed for the, the next EVA to remove a PFCS that we have on the outside of station. There's also a jumper that's outside of station that they're going to need to move to a new location that's going to help them uh, with the task that they're doing on the next one. Art, a little bit unexpected today was uh, the failed leak checks on Drew Feustel's suit. Uh, finally, the fourth time was the charm. His suit is in good shape now, airtight, and they're pressing ahead. We lost a little bit uh, down on the timeline, although the spacewalk will remain intact. If you were the EVA officer back there and uh, you heard all this, what are the mitigating circumstances that have to be conducted by the crew and the support crew in the equipment lock to uh, overcome uh, a series of failed leak checks on a suit? Yeah, so with any failed leak check, you try to look for the source of the leak, obviously. Um, in a lot of cases, so there's many seals all over the suit. I mean, the suit is great that there's so many components you can change out so that it can fit pretty much anyone, um, but that means that there's also various seals. So um, you, there's a procedure that we run, but it has the crew kind of go through and the IV crew member listen to different areas, see if they can identify where the leak is coming from. So that's always a, a good place to start. And uh, once you can find the smoking gun, then that's when you go through and, and clean it, make sure, you know, even things as small as a hair sometimes, can cause a leak. Uh, so you make sure that everything's good there and uh, change it all out. So sounds like that's what the team did and they're ready to go. Frequently asked question uh, over the past few days. Okay, so eight days ago, Drew and Ricky uh, were on a Russian rocket heading out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan en route to the space station. They only arrived six days ago and here they are ready to go for a spacewalk. Uh, this almost is a throwback to the old space shuttle days, but even though they're veteran spacewalkers, the consolidation of preparations in the timeline, uh, what kind of challenges does that pose? Yeah, I mean, there's there's good and bad things. You know, some of the, the good things about it is that um, they, were, they were on the ground recently, so it's sometimes it's easier to communicate with them. Uh, there's more of a chance that they got to see it before they left, maybe even in, in the pool. Um, you know, some of the challenges is that you kind of takes a while to get your space legs when you're on orbit. So uh, just kind of getting used to moving around again, those kind of things. Um, you know, fortunately for Drew and Ricky, they both uh, have both flown before, both on shuttle and did spacewalks on shuttle. So this is kind of old hat for them. This is the way they're used to doing it. So uh, I, it sounds like, you know, they, they adapted very well and are ready to go for this one. Final question, 1998, first spacewalk uh, in uh, ISS assembly. Uh, to put the first two components together, the first element of the space station coming up on the 20th anniversary of its launch. Could you guys in the EVA world ever have conceived that we would be over 200 spacewalks at this point, over months and months of spacewalking time for the crew members, both US and Russian crew members, at this point uh, to put the station in the configuration that it is today? Yeah, it's, it's a truly amazing feat, and you know, just being a part of it is definitely an honor. Um, I think it's one of those things that you take just a step at a time. You, know, you look at, at what the next few spacewalks are and go from there. But yeah, when you look back and see all that's been done and you know you can walk the halls here and see the pictures to show uh, Space Station and how it's grown, it's very impressive. Art Thomason, a veteran spacewalk officer with us this morning here in Mission Control as spacewalk preparations press ahead for the start of today's excursion outside of the Quest airlock by Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold. Art, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I am available to do step four of the ISRU Febreze protocol.
Last week and Nemo, are you asking uh, to take over and pick up? Is that what you're asking? Begin exercise in three, okay. two, one, mark. Things, but uh, step four and uh, step 11, I can help. It's the appropriate time. Checking. Airlock Houston for Nemo. You have a go for steps four through 11 at your convenience. A reminder in step four, we are looking for 31 decimal five amp, amp hours for both EMUs. E 31.5 for both. Good read. Stop exercise in three, two, one, mark.
This is Mission Control Houston, uh, a good view inside the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock as Japanese astronaut Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency floats through the open hatchway to the crew lock section of Quest, where Drew Feustel on the right in the suit bearing the red stripes and Ricky Arnold on the left will be entering uh, soon uh, at the end of uh, their pre-breath uh, procedures. Uh, that hatchway will be closed behind them. They will then be uh, ready for a final series of uh, suit checks, communications checks. As a precursor to the depressurization of the crew lock section, the opening of the outer thermal cover and the hatch, and the start of today's spacewalk at the point at which they put their suits on internal battery power. As we mentioned earlier, uh, today's uh, preparations running uh, some one hour, 20 minutes or so behind schedule uh, because of uh, a longer period of time that was required to complete a successful leak check on Drew Feustel's suit. It took uh, four shots at uh, uh, verifying that Feustel had an airtight suit. You're looking at Feustel here in an airlock camera. Uh, the uh, gloves, the arms on his extravehicular mobility unit and the helmet had to be removed and the sealing surfaces and sealing connections had to be wiped down in order to uh, uh, reattach those components and then uh, repressurize the suit to verify that uh, he had an airtight suit, which he does. Both suits uh, for Feustel and Arnold are in excellent shape. While we have a moment or two, um, we're taking uh, your questions on uh, social media during uh, today's spacewalk coverage. Uh, the first uh, of the day coming from Charles Olson on uh, hashtag ask NASA. He asks, what is the weight of the suit and the camera? We believe uh, that's a reference to the camera assembly that will be swapped out on the uh, port one truss of the International Space Station at what is called camera port eight later in today's spacewalk. The extravehicular mobility unit on Earth weighs 250 pounds, that's its mass here on Earth. The camera assembly itself measures 44 inches by 22 inches by 25 inches and weighs 100 pounds here on Earth. Of course, it's all weightless, just a matter of moving mass around uh, in the weightlessness of space, but uh, that is uh, the weight of the suit and the camera assembly that uh, will be installed uh, to replace a failed camera assembly on the Port 1 uh, upper outboard area of the truss of the International Space Station later in today's spacewalk. Eric Walker asks, how long will the spacewalk last today? Straightforward, uh, it is scheduled to last six and a half hours. All U.S. spacewalks outside of uh, the Quest airlock uh, run about six and a half hours in duration. The crew's uh, spacesuits uh, are verified to go much longer if they need to based on uh, uh, oxygen and other consumables that the spacesuit uh, provides for the spacewalkers. It's basically a mini spacecraft in its own right uh, that the crew uh, lives and uh, breathes breathes through during the course of their activities in the void of space. Uh, the length of the spacewalk will be determined uh, by the flight control team here in Houston as the spacewalk evolves, uh, dependent on uh, how the spacewalkers are doing on their consumables and uh, how their tasks are moving along. Sometimes the crew runs well ahead of the uh, timeline once they're outside. Sometimes uh, they're right on the timeline. And so uh, we'll uh, We'll just uh, follow along and see how long uh, it will take for Feustel and Arnold to complete all of their primary tasks on today's docket. Blue00.mom writes, how much time does it take to put on your gear and perform checks before you can do your spacewalk, and does it vary by mission? That's a great question and uh, very apropos to today's activities. Typically, uh, the crew uh, will awaken about 12 midnight central time. About an hour later, after they have a bite to eat, uh, they'll start to climb into their extravehicular mobility gear. And once they do, uh, then uh, they'll run through a series of leak checks like we've been talking about here this morning, uh, conduct uh, the final um, preparations, which will involve uh, the elimination of any residual nitrogen from their bloodstreams, uh, and then uh, run through a pre-breathe uh, procedure before moving into the uh, crew lock section of the Quest airlock. In all, 
It's about a five-hour process uh, to prepare the crew members and their suits uh, before they actually depressurize the crew lock section of Quest and move outside into the void of space to begin their activities, such as we will see about two hours from now. In addition uh, to the questions you are submitting on uh, hashtag AskNASA today, veteran astronaut and veteran spacewalker Doug Wheelock is here in Mission Control. Not only uh, will, will we be answering uh, your questions on the air, but Wheelock as well will be answering questions you submit with the hashtag AskNASA on his own Twitter account, which is at Astro underscore wheels. So uh, you can be talking uh, via social media directly to a veteran spacewalker, and veteran astronaut Doug Wheelock, as well as uh, submitting questions through the normal hashtag procedures as we cover the bases today on social media. In addition uh, to questions you are submitting on uh, hashtag AskNASA and to astronaut Doug Wheelock on his Twitter account, uh, our coverage today not only is on NASA television but on Facebook Live. A bit later this morning as the spacewalk uh, progresses, uh, shortly after 11 a.m. Central Time, noon Eastern Time, uh, we will be hearing uh, directly and live from uh, veteran flight director Emily Nelson and veteran astronaut Tom Marshburn who will be in the viewing room overlooking the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room here at Mission Control to answer your questions as part of the Facebook Live coverage of today's spacewalk. With uh, the uh, pre-breathe uh, protocol continuing for Feustel uh, and Arnold uh, in the equipment lock section of Quest, again, Feustel on the right uh, as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one wearing the suit with the red stripes, Ricky Arnold uh, wearing the suit with no stripes on the left side of your screen. Uh, a clock is now up on the wall for a go for depress. Uh, that is about an hour and 11 minutes from now. That implies uh, that uh, we might uh, be in a position to start the spacewalk somewhere in the neighborhood of 8.15 or 8.20 a.m. Central Time. Again, running behind schedule today uh, because of uh, a series of leak checks uh, that took longer than expected for Drew Feustel's suit, but everything's in good shape. And the two crew members are uh, moving along in the home stretch of their pre-spacewalk preparations prior to the time that they put their suits on internal battery power to mark the official start of today's spacewalk, which will be the 209th in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades.
start cycle seven in three, two, one, mark. Airlock Houston for Nemo. Alex. Nemo, we appreciate all those pictures you took of the tool config. There was one picture that wasn't quite clear. It was of the medium ORU bag with the Node 3 EWC cable routing. Um, what we'd like you to do is just verify that there is a ret going from the plate, the antenna plate that's on the outside of the bag, to the inside of the bag. So the ret should go from the plate to the inside of the bag. I will double check. Thank you. Alex, you are absolutely right. The uh, antenna with 100.04.0640 alpha is securely attached to the bag using two adjustables, but it's not a wet from the bag. Copy, Nemo. We would like you to add an additional ret from the antenna plate to the inside of the bag, one of the tether points on the inside of the bag. There may be an external ret already available for that. Otherwise, just add one from the tether staging area. I see a free ret touched outside of the, outside of that back handrail. So uh, if it's okay, I'm going to use this ret. That is acceptable, and just ensure that that's not the airlock uh, red. Small, small red. Just uh, both ends are attached to the two stanchions of the handle. Five minutes to think about it. Perfect, Nemo. Use that to attach the plate to the inside of the bag. We'll use this red from uh, right to the inside of the bag. Good read. Stop exercise in three, uh, Alex, two, uh, one. Actually, do you suggest that the one end of the red attached to the plate, the other end uh, leave stay outside of the bag. That way he can uh, easily grab the other end. Is that okay? Checking. Nemo, back with you. We like your plan. We like Drew's plan. Copy, you're okay. Copy. Now the plate is attached with red. The other end of the 
small small is attached to the outside of the bag on the one of the extension of the handrail. Begin exercise cycle eight in three, two, one, mark. Okay. And we copy Nemo. And Nemo, we have great video uh, from the airlock camera. Do you mind just showing us that tether config from the airlock camera? We like it, Nima. Thank you so much. Looks great. Thank you. We have a question. Are we supposed to be exercising or resting? Exercising. Exercising. Stop exercise in three, two, one, mark.
Start cycle nine in three, two, one, start. Stop exercise in three, two, one, mark. This is Mission Control Houston. For those of you uh, just joining us on NASA television and Facebook Live, you're looking into the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock where veteran NASA astronauts Drew Feustel on the right, wearing the suit bearing the red stripes, and Ricky Arnold on the left with the suit uh, with no stripes have just uh, completed a period of uh, light exercise in their suits to purge uh, any residual nitrogen out of their bloodstreams as they pre-breathe pure oxygen uh, to prevent uh, any situation known as decompression sickness or the bends from occurring when they step out into the void of space. 
Just uh, beyond them through that open hatchway is the crew lock section of the Quest airlock where uh, the two spacewalkers will be moving in to uh, a short time from now. We're just under an hour before the go will be given to depressurize uh, the crew lock section of Quest. We're running uh, slightly behind schedule in today's activities because it took longer than expected to complete a series of leak checks on Drew Feustel's spacesuit. Uh, there were three uh, failed leak checks, so the uh, support crew uh, assisting uh, Feustel and Arnold uh, with their suit up and uh, pre-spacewalk preparations today, uh, that being Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and Scott Tingle of NASA, they um, disassembled uh, Feustel's helmet, his gloves, and uh, a portion of uh, other components of uh, his suit wiped down uh, the seals and the sealing surfaces on the suit, uh, reconnected all of those uh, components, and a good leak check uh, was finally confirmed uh, for Feustel uh, shortly uh, before 5.30 a.m. Central Time. The net result is that uh, we're about an hour and 20 minutes behind the timeline for today, looking for a start of today's spacewalk somewhere in the neighborhood of about 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Hey, Drew and Ricky, uh, Tony just wanted to relay a message that he thinks you guys are working harder up there today than in the gym. Spacecraft communicator Alex uh, Canalakos, who has been part of the Orbit One team uh, in the blue shirt, uh, has been uh, talking to the crew members during their pre-spacewalk preparations today. Uh, the uh, flight director on console in the white shirt uh, who will preside over today's spacewalk is uh, veteran flight director Tony Sakachi. Uh, seated is Leslie Ringo. She's uh, with the oncoming Orbit 2 team of flight controllers. She'll be talking to the crew up until the time of uh, the depressurization of the crew lock section of Quest. She'll be joined a short time uh, from now by uh, Japanese astronaut uh, Aki Hoshide, uh, who will uh, serve as the ground IV, or intravehicular crew member, assisting uh, Feustel and Arnold with all of their procedures once they move outside of the Quest airlock. And once again, back in the equipment lock section of Quest, our two spacewalkers for today. If you were expecting uh, the spacewalk to begin about 20 minutes from now, you can sit back, have another cup of coffee. Uh, we're slightly behind the timeline. We're expecting uh, the spacewalk to begin in the neighborhood of about 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 9.20 Eastern Time. We'll keep you posted on uh, a more specific time uh, as we target uh, the uh, beginning of the spacewalk that will be marked at the point at which the suits are placed on internal battery power after the crew has moved into the crew lock uh, section of Quest, closed the hatch uh, behind them, and depressurized a Quest, uh, the crew lock section of Quest down to vacuum. Stop exercise in three, two, one mark. All right, guys, that's the completion of your 10 exercises. Airlock Houston for Nemo. Here. Nemo, you have a go for step 12 in EMU pre breathe at GMT 1201. Okay, 1201, and go for Metox deployment. Good read back.
And Drew and Ricky, just want to let you know I'm handing you over to Leslie. It's been a pleasure working with you this morning. And like I always tell you in the MBL, be safe, have fun out there. And uh, Alex uh, Canalacos, who uh, used to be a spacewalk officer uh, here in Mission Control and with the EVA office here at the Johnson Space Center, wishing uh, Foistel and Arnold the best of luck on their spacewalk that will be coming up in about an hour and 20 minutes or so from now as they uh, move into the final phase of their uh, pre-breathe their procedures and other pre-spacewalk uh, activities as they uh, hang on their respective sides of the equipment lock section of uh, the Quest airlock. Th again, they'll be moving inside of the crew lock section of Quest uh, a short time from now, and the hatch will be closed behind them as they uh, maneuver themselves into the proper positions in that uh, cramped uh, space inside uh, the crew lock, where several bags of tools and equipment have been staged, including uh, the tools and equipment uh, for the wireless antennas that will be installed on the outside of the Tranquility module to accommodate a payload called EcoStress that will be launched on a, a future SpaceX Dragon mission. EcoStress is an acronym uh, for the Ecosystem Spaceborne Thermal Radiometer Experiment on Space Station that will be mounted on the uh, experiment platform on the outside of the Japanese Kibo module to measure the temperature of plants and to use that information to better understand how much water plants need and how they respond to the stress of the environment. Those uh, wireless antennas again uh, will relay payload data back uh, to payload controllers uh, back on Earth. Also in the bags that have been staged in the crew lock section of Quest, is a brand new camera assembly uh, to be installed on the Port 1 truss of the International Space Station at Camera Port 8 uh, to replace uh, a camera assembly whose pan and tilt unit has failed. Uh, a new uh, standard definition camera is part of that assembly. The high definition camera that is currently on uh, the existing assembly on the Port 1 truss uh, will be removed and reinstalled on the new uh, bracket for that camera port as uh, we move along in today's spacewalk. A good view of Drew Foistel uh, in the uh, equipment lock section of the Quest airlock. As we've mentioned uh, throughout the course of our broadcast so far this morning, this will be the 209th spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. Drew Foistel uh, about to embark on the seventh spacewalk of his career, 42 hours and 18 minutes of spacewalking time accrued on the final uh, Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission, STS-125, that was conducted in 2009. And the next to last space shuttle mission, STS-134, that flew uh, to the International Space Station in May of 2011. Ricky Arnold, uh, who is EV-2, uh, he'll be wearing the suit with no stripes today, uh, has previously uh, conducted two spacewalks on the STS-119 assembly mission to the station in 2009, accruing 12 hours and 34 minutes of spacewalking time.
With uh, Feustel and Arnold having completed their uh, exercise period to increase their metabolic rate and cleanse any residual nitrogen out of their bloodstreams, uh, you're looking uh, at Feustel on the right, uh, Arnold on the left, and the so-called suit IV or intravehicular crew member who has helped uh, throughout the course of uh, this morning's activities. Scott Tingle of NASA floating into the field of view and Norishige Kanai, uh, the Japanese astronaut uh, who has been supervising uh, all of the work today. Scott Tingle will be uh, uh, at the uh, controls of the space station's robotic arm as you take a look at him in the equipment lock just floating right above Drew Feustel's head. Tingle will be operating the robotic arm uh, that uh, will maneuver Ricky Arnold around uh, the vicinity of the truss of the International Space Station. Arnold will uh, have his feet mounted in a portable foot restraint for the work associated with uh, the release of uh, clamps and uh, line heaters that will remove uh, two uh, flex hoses from a radiator beam valve module on the truss of the International Space Station. And he will also be uh, in charge of uh, most of the work associated with uh, the removal and replacement of that camera assembly uh, out on the port uh, truss of the International Outpost.
This is Mission Control Houston as uh, we continue to watch uh, spacewalk preparations unfold. Uh, soon uh, the two spacewalkers, Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold, will be assisted uh, out of their current positions on uh, the side walls of the equipment lock section of Quest through the hatchway into the crew lock section of the two compartment Quest airlock uh, to close the hatch and begin uh, the depressurization of uh, the crew lock of Quest uh, that should get underway about 35 minutes or so from now. Again, if you're just joining us on NASA television and Facebook Live, uh, the uh, crew is running uh, slightly behind schedule. It took longer than expected to complete leak checks to Drew Feustel's spacesuit earlier this morning. And so uh, we're now expecting uh, the start of today's spacewalk uh, to occur shortly after 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll keep you posted on all of that. In the meantime, we're continuing uh, to take questions uh, that you're providing for us on uh, social media at the hashtag AskNASA. The next one comes from Suda. He asks, uh, what if an astronaut's harness breaks during a spacewalk and they start floating away from the International Space Station? Great question. You'll see soon uh, that uh, the assistants uh, for today's spacewalkers uh, Norishige Kanai and Scott Tingle will be outfitting Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold with jet-powered backpacks called SAFERS, the acronym of which is Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. Those are uh, nitrogen-propelled uh, maneuvering units, if you will, in the mold of the old man maneuvering units, but uh, slightly smaller in, uh, in uh, design. Uh, in the highly unlikely event, they would become untethered uh, from a variety of tethers and uh, other uh, assisted aids that they have uh, once they're outside on the structure of the International Space Station, they could propel themselves back into the safety of uh, the uh, truss of the station uh, to uh, make their way back to the airlock. So they have uh, the ability to uh, make their way back uh, under the uh, power of those simplified aid for EVA rescue jet-powered backpacks in the unlikely event they would become untethered. The next question comes from Worthington Publish, who, who asks, what is the longest spacewalk in NASA history? That also would be the longest spacewalk in history, period. Eight hours and 56 minutes that occurred on March 11, 2001, some 17 years ago, by Jim Voss and Susan Helms on the STS-102 mission, a spacewalk uh, of considerable length in which they uh, laid out the cable configuration for the uh, third in the series of pressurized mating adapters or docking ports on the modules of the International Space Station and to install a cradle assembly for the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station on the truss of the International Outpost. Eight hours, 56 minutes, that uh, EVA, uh, on March 11, 2001. If you're interested, the next two longest spacewalks in history, eight hours, 29 minutes, that was during the STS-49 mission, the maiden flight of the Space Shuttle Endeavour to retrieve the wayward Intelsat communications satellite, May 13, 1992. That was a three-man spacewalk, the only three-person spacewalk in history by Pierre Thewitt, Rick Hebe, and Tom Akers to manually capture that Intelsat satellite. And uh, apropos to one of the uh, principals here in Mission Control today, uh, that you'll be seeing and hearing from throughout the course of the spacewalk, the third longest spacewalk in history, eight hours, 17 minutes, occurring uh, on August 30th, 2012, during Expedition 32 by Sonny Williams and Aki Hoshide, who will be the ground IV or space uh, walk communicator, talking directly to Feustel and Arnold when they're outside of the International Space Station today. They removed a faulty uh, main bus switching unit and rigged cables for future Russian module arrivals uh, as uh, they worked uh, in the void of space on August 30th, 2012. And there is a, a view of Aki Hoshide as he settles into his chair uh, at the Capcom console. Next to him is Leslie Ringo, who will be talking uh, to the crew members inside the International Space Station as required throughout the course of today's activities.
report the time to the ground. Close the uh, valve down. Airlock, resume in suit, pre brief cock. One, two, uh, twelve, fourteen. Copy, twelve, fourteen. Uh, set 22 of the Metox replacement, uh, uh, one minute has been elapsed, elapsed and uh, both suits are leak tight. Access for leak check. Copy, Neil, thanks for your report. And we are going back to pre release protocol step 13 and uh, starting safer zoning from now. Copy Nemo, we're following. This is Mission Control Houston, a good view of uh, the flight control room on, on the uh, forward row, the flight director's console in the white shirt 
is uh, the flight director for today's activities, Tony Sacacci, seated to his left on the right of your screen. In the blue shirt is flight director Anthony Varia, who uh, is uh, sitting with Sacacci today and who will be the lead flight director for the next pair of spacewalks that are coming up uh, a bit later this year in the spring. At the very left-hand side of your screen, Aki Hoshide, who will serve as uh, the ground IV. You can see uh, him on the left side of your screen. Veteran Japanese astronaut, Hoshide will be the uh, spacewalk communicator talking directly to Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold as they're outside of the Quest airlock conducting their work. In the back row on the right side of your screen is Grant Slusser, who is the lead spacewalk officer for today's activities. He uh, will be working uh, directly with uh, Flight Director Tony Sakachi uh, and uh, Hoshide uh, to uh, keep uh, the crew on track and to talk to his back room and uh, resolve any issues that may crop up during the course of today's planned six and a half hour excursion. The next step uh, for uh, the crew in uh, the uh, equipment lock uh, will be uh, to be assisted in donning uh, their simplified aid for EVA rescue uh, backpacks, those jet-powered backpacks that would be used in the highly unlikely event the crew would become uh, untethered during the course of today's activities. You can see the frame uh, for one of the safers coming into the field of view as uh, the um, Suit uh, IV or intravehicular crew member Norishige Kanai uh, works the checklist uh, and uh, talks uh, to the ground here in Houston. As uh, we look at this picture, the International Space Station is flying 254 miles just to the east of the Falkland Islands over the South Atlantic, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly uh, trajectory in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. There is a good look at the end effector on the uh, space station's Canada-built, uh, Canadian-built uh, robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2. Uh, Ricky Arnold will be riding uh, that arm and a portable foot restraint for some of the work that he'll be uh, conducting outside uh, that will include uh, the disconnection of flex hoses on a radiator beam valve module uh, that were identified as leaking. That uh, radiator beam va uh, valve module uh, was uh, vented of its ammonia, so it is uh, ready to have its uh, suspect flex hoses removed. They will be replaced on a future spacewalk. Arnold will also be riding at the end of the uh, robotic arm for the uh, removal and replacement of a camera assembly out on the Port 1 truss of the International Space Station later in today's spacewalk activities.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're about to regain uh, our downlink uh, video, and there it is. As uh, you take a look at uh, the backpack of uh, Drew Feustel, that is the simplified aid for EVA rescue jet-powered uh, backpack that Feustel has donned with the assistance of Norishige uh, Kanai and uh, Scott Tingle, who is inside the crew lock section of Quest in the blue shirt that you see there. Uh, Feustel is about to be moved into the crew lock section. He'll be followed uh, by Ricky Arnold, who will have his safer unit, as it is called, uh, mounted on the back of his extravehicular mobility unit. He'll join Feustel inside uh, the crew lock section of Quest as we're about 19 minutes away from the point at which uh, the go for depress uh, would be uh, passed along to the crew from the flight control team here in Mission Control. That'll be after the uh, hatch is closed and the crew has uh, maneuvered itself in the tight quarters of the crew lock section into the most comfortable position uh, to conduct the final systems checks on their respective spacesuits. Uh, we uh, had expected uh, the spacewalk to begin about 20 minutes ago, but ran behind on the timeline uh, earlier this morning in the vicinity of about 4 a.m. Central Time when it took uh, longer than expected to complete leak checks to Drew Feustel's uh, spacesuit. All of that uh, turned out uh, fine, however. He has an airtight uh, suit. All the uh, suit systems are in excellent shape, as are the systems on Ricky Arnold's suit. And a good uh, look at Drew Feustel uh, as extravehicular crew member number one, wearing the suit, as you see, uh, with the red stripes, uh, not only on his backpack, but also on his legs. And now he's being moved into uh, the crew lock section of Quest to be joined a few minutes from now uh, by his spacewalking uh, colleague for the day, Ricky Arnold, who you see on the left side of your screen. Once uh, the depressurization of the crew lock uh, gets underway, it will be conducted in a two-step fashion. Right now, uh, the pressure inside the crew lock is 14.5 pounds per square inch. It will be uh, depressurized first to five pounds uh, per square inch of pressure. And a pause in the depressurization activities uh, will uh, commence for a short period of time to enable the crew to conduct uh, systems checks on their suits and communications checks before the crew lock section is taken down to vacuum. Once that occurs, uh, the crew will be instructed to open the uh, outer thermal cover and then the hatch uh, to uh, the Quest airlock. The official start of the spacewalk will be marked at the point at which the crew places their suits on internal battery power. <laughs> 